this video, we're going to take an introductory look at Altair Inspire. Now, Altair has a very large suite of tools. This one specifically is best used for importing geometry and prepping it for simulation. Simulation like uh, the FEA testing or optimization testing or the motion analysis. Uh, this video is largely going to go over the interface, just kind of getting started with it in this geometry tab. All right, let's get started. I'm going to hit File, Open, and grab a recent part file here. And I can see there's some sort of mistake that I've made when I was using that part file. Now I've got two of them. To get rid of the extra ones, of course, I could just kind of delete them from this space. Uh, but I personally like having this model browser open, so View Model Browser, where I can select um, and delete from that menu. All right, kind of the second thing that I'm seeing, uh, MKS, meters, kilogram, newton, seconds in the bottom right-hand corner. I prefer inches. I can change that in the bottom right-hand corner here. Um, or I can take a closer look at the mouse gestures as well by going into File and then Preferences. Uh, this one, see Units, I, you can see I can change that here. Um, also in mouse controls, if there's anything here that I don't like or I would like to override, I can absolutely do that from this menu. Let's pay attention to what it tells me. The right mouse button is pan, uh, the middle mouse button holding it down is rotate, and scrolling that middle mouse button in and out is zoom. Now just kind of doing that for a little bit, I'm starting to feel that this ISO view is not what I want. I would rather have this be sitting flat on a ground. Um, I do not orient it with the triad here. What I actually do is move the part file in the workspace. So I'm going to hit move up here in the top left, select my part file, and then select the center of that triad. That gets me numerical numbers of course, numbers are numerical. Um, that gets me numbers that I can type in. It's a little bit easier than pulling the arrows around. And to get this flipped the way I want, I'm going to do negative 90 degrees on the x-axis. Awesome. That finishes moving that component to the right orientation. It's a little bit off the screen. Um, I'm going to use zoom to fit uh, this button right here to get that back to center. Excellent. While we're here looking at this bottom left-hand corner, let's see what else is there. Some other prep work I might do is setting up other camera views. As you likely saw me clicking, I can hover over this triad and hit top, front, right, and ISO to snap to any of those views. Or I can use the arrow keys on the left and right-hand side to maybe create a different orientation that I'd like to look at. Once I have that angle, I can hit the camera icon and save it with a name, enter key. There we go, that actually saved that view. Uh, so now if I rotate around or do something, I can always get back to my special view. Uh, something else like this you can save in advance are section views. Let's go back to ISO. Uh, section view is that icon here at the bottom where I can pre-select planes, either hovering over part files or the planes in the center of the screen like that. And that, of course, can be adjusted if, if you want to move that around the screen. Um, when, once you've set up that plane, it is saved into the Section Planes dialog box. And a right-click and hide or right-click and show is how you bring those various saved section views back onto the screen. My plan for this part is to run an optimization on this bracket. There's going to be some force loads and some connectors or bolt features. So first, what I would like to do is simplify out any excess geometry that's not load bearing. The easiest way to do that is with the simplify icon in the top row here and picking one of those pop-up tools. Uh, this bracket has a few extra fillets that I don't want. So by clicking rounds, I will select every fillet in the part file and then left clicking on the red faces, deletes, and then patches those faces. Pretty awesome. Right click, hit OK, and that closes down that tool. The second thing that I would generally do, especially for an optimization problem, 
is to close off or partition areas that are going to have restraints or forces. I would use the partition tool and select any red faces that uh, I'm allowed to to create that partition geometry. I right click, hit OK, and let's take a closer look at that face. We can see that it absolutely subtracted out volume from the initial part. This is not intersecting. Um, it is a, like a cut body in there. All right, great. So I've saved out a region that I might be applying forces to. Let's say the rest of the model, the rest of the part, is something that I'm going to be running the optimization on. I right click that part, I choose design space, and it's now a different color telling me I've set that correctly. Oh, but wait, I wish I had done partition on the whole faces as well. I can totally do that after the fact. I go to partition and click those holes now. As we saw in the partition tool, there were not other faces that I could select on. Um, I could just left click on it like that, but, but let's say I needed to manually make some geometry. I would need to make a sketch and do some extrusions. So that sounds like it's these icons here as well as push and pull. Let's see that in action. First, I double click the part that I want to sketch on or change in some way. Then I double click the face to generate the sketch. This icon down here in the bottom left gets me flat to the sketch. I can come up here and draw some rectangles. Um, as I'm drawing this, you might see it snapping to various points on the grid. Now that's a nice function of sketching inside of Altair Inspire. Um, of course, I can set the dimensions after the fact. Uh, what else could I do here? Let's go ahead and draw some excess geometry. Uh, so this polyline tool lets me kind of continually draw a bunch of points. Um, if I want to delete anything that I have drawn, I can use this trim command. In the trim command, I can either select individual lines. Let's go ahead and have something overlapping. I can see that only trims up to the next edges or I can box select to delete everything in that box. I'm ready to now extrude this rectangle. So I'm going to hit push pull and specifically not the revolve part of this icon, but the push pull part of this icon. Now that creates a split face to then extrude that face. I need to select it and pull that arrow in a direction. Now if I'm pulling it out of the model like this, um, it's adding geometry. If I'm pulling that into the model, it's cutting it away. Right click, OK, saves my change. Now perhaps I want to create some sort of intersecting part file similar to these uh, partitions. I would not do this function. Instead, I would hit new part before creating my sketch. New part tells Inspire that this needs to be a uh, separate part file after the fact here. I'll go ahead and draw a rectangle in space, hit push and pull, and we can see here that this is uh, more of a surface geometry that I'm now able to pull through the model. The next thing that I would like to show um, is the cut command partially because we just saw that we could cut with the push and pull command. So what exactly is this one? This is for slicing bodies into multiple bodies. So for example, I would hit targets, select my cube or rectangular prism, and then choose a plane to slice that in half with. I was able to kind of use this gear and just snap to a midpoint of the line to get halfway through that block. I could also have selected any plane to use as the slicing plane, any kind of face or plane here. I like the way this looks. I'm going to hit cut and turn off my command and see that this is actually created now two separate bodies. Things that I can do with these intersected bodies, for example, the Boolean operations. I have combine and subtract and intersect. Uh, subtract, I would pick the main body. Tools, I would choose the thing I want to delete with and then hit subtract. I can see that cut away that geometry. Now the third thing I want to show on this side of the model is the mid surface command. Mid surface is intended to simplify the geometry 
turn something from 3D into 2D for the intention of having the analysis run faster. As I use mid-surface and select some part file here, I'm going to hit OK. Uh, this mid-surface part in the tree, it now has a different icon in front of it telling me it's a surface, but it actually also, uh, let's go to properties, it has important um, thickness data for the original thickness of that part file stored in the surface model. This way when we run the simulation later um, it has an understanding of how thick that part file actually is. Next I would like to show you guys some of the features up here. I'm going to start with move face and then we'll take a look at mirror and scale. Uh, so move faces is a way to either copy or um, shift geometry around, useful for these imported types of geometry. With move faces, of course you can select individual faces, or by holding down the control key, multi-select faces. As I hold down control, notice how my icon goes from a negative sign if I want to take away a face, or a plus sign if I want to add it to the click. Once I let go of control, I can then slide that geometry around. I'm going to hit Control Z. And this time, I'm going to hold down the Control key and hover over this triad. And I'm going to use a middle point here. Uh, that lets me free drag a copied hole to another area of the model. You can see that it's kind of getting dropped into this here. Now we hit Control Z. I don't want that extra hole. The mirror command. This is a way to copy, of course, the entire body across faces or planes. You do have to select entire part files. And let's go ahead and copyright this plane here. Uh, by default, this is having those faces flush against each other. If you would like to offset this for any reason, you hit the triad, and that allows you to then drag this around. Uh, last, uh, let's take a look at the scale tool. Um, again, I'm picking a part to scale and uh, typing in a number. To get a little bit more specific, if you hold down the control key, you can scale more than one part file at a time. And if you left click on a point or a hole somewhere in the model, you will then select a point to scale around. Alright, what have we missed on this command bar? Uh, just looking at these icons here, uh, we have missed fillets and chamfers, and those are pretty straightforward. With fillets and chamfers, I select which one I want to add to the system, select an edge or a face, and it will add that fillet to the system. Holding control key allows me to do this to multiple edges at the same time. Um, hey, the preview went away. There must be something wrong with the last edge that I selected. Um, control Z or just another control click of that edge will let me unselect that edge. Thanks again for watching.